In this video, we will take a look at a second order differential equation on a series RLC circuit. Uh, our goal is to derive the second order differential equation in a standard form for the voltage across this capacitor and to solve that differential equation using uh, the initial conditions for the circuit. So let's get started. So here's our circuit. At time t equals zero, the switch is, switch is closed. A 10 volt source powers a 1 kilo ohm resistor, 2 Henry uh, inductor, and a 0.5 microfarad capacitor. So, on this circuit, on this circuit, by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop, we can say that uh, we can say that the voltage source 10 volt is equal to the voltage dropped between the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. So at time t equals zero, switch is closed, the circuit is complete, and by KVL we can say Vn equals Vr at time t plus the inductor voltage and the capacitor voltage. Now, the input voltage is given as 10, Vr is Ir, Vl is LDI dt, and we want to leave Vc because that's what we're interested in. So we're interested in figuring out what is the voltage across the capacitor. We know that the voltage across the capacitor, or sorry, the current going through that capacitor is the same current as IT. So the current here is the same. So current going through a capacitor can be written as C dV dt. So let's replace every IT with C dV dt. Now we have uh, second order differential equations because of there is d square dt square so we have a second order differential equation with vc this is not yet in a standard form because the standard form has the second the second order term has a coefficient of one in order to bring this this differential equation into a standard form let's divide both sides by lc to make the coefficient of the second order term one so let's do that and we get a standard form differential equation d square v dt square plus r over l dv dt plus v over lc equals 10 over lc. Now this equation is in a standard form. r over l is the 2 jeta omega n term where jeta is the damping factor and 1 over lc right here is omega n square which is the undamped natural frequency square omega n is un, undamped natural frequency the right hand side is 10 over lc that is the forcing function since the circuit has uh, both uh, since the circuit has a homogeneous and a particular solution because of the forcing function on the right hand side we'll have to consider the voltage across the capacitor as both a particular and a homogeneous solution. But before we do that, let's figure out which, uh, whether this differential equation has a underdamped response, a overdamped response, or a critical damp response. To do that, let's figure first out uh, the natural frequency, omega n. So we can write down omega n is square root of one over LC in this case, and L is two Henry, C is 0.5 microfarads, so 0.5 10 to the power minus 6. And if we calculate that, it comes out to 1000 radians per second. So that's omega n. Now we have omega n. So let's figure out 2 jeta omega n. 2 jeta omega n is equal to r over L. That basically means jeta is equal to 1 over 2 omega n times r over L. And by plugging in the value of omega n and r over L, we get jeta to be 0.25. Now clearly jeta is less than 1, so the system is going to have an underdamped response. So the homogeneous part of the voltage across the capacitor will give us a uh, give us an underdamped response and because we have a forcing function that's non-zero, so in other words we have a forcing function 10 over LC in this case, our voltage across the capacitor will have a particular solution as well. So we can write down the voltage across the capacitor as the sum of the particular solution and the sum of the homo and the homogeneous solution. So let's figure out what the particular solution is. The particular solution is basically the forcing function divided by omega n square. So 
we have 1 10 over LC divided by omega n square. We already calculated omega n as 1000, so that gives us 10 volt total. So the particular solution is 10 volt. Now the homogeneous solution is because of zeta less than 1 will have an underdamped response, and that takes the form of Vc homogeneous is equal to k1 cosine omega dt plus k2 sine omega dt and the whole thing is multiplied by e to the power minus t uh, sigma. Okay? This is the homogeneous solution. k1 is unknown, k2 is unknown, omega d is currently unknown, and sigma is unknown. So let's figure those out. So in order to figure that out, we need to write the VCT as sum of particular and the homogeneous solution. So let's now figure out what K1, K2 are based on, uh, based on their initial conditions. Now what are the initial conditions in the circuit? At time t equals zero, the switch is just closed, so the voltage across the capacitor cannot change abruptly. So we can safely say that the voltage across the capacitor at time t equals zero is the same as the voltage across the capacitor just before t is zero. At t equals zero, the switch was closed, and before t was equal to zero, the switch was open. There was no power source, so the voltage across the capacitor is equal to zero. So voltage across the capacitor at t equals zero is equal to zero. Similarly, the current across the induct current through an inductor cannot change abruptly. So again, at t less than zero, the switch was open. There was no current flowing to the circuit, so we can safely assume that the current t less than zero is zero, and since the current through an inductor cannot change abruptly, we can safely say that the current through the inductor at time t equals zero is equal to what it used to be before t is zero, and that's equal to zero amps. Using these two initial conditions, we can now figure out what k1 and k2 are. So let's start with the voltage across the capacitor. Applying the initial condition for the capacitor voltage at time t equals zero, let's put in t equals zero on this exp in this expression right here. So Vc zero equals 10 k1 cosine omega d zero, k2 sine omega d zero, e to the power minus zero sigma. This leads us to cosine zero, sine zero e to the power zero. Cosine zero is one, sine zero is zero, e to the power zero is one. And simplifying that, we get 10 plus k1 is equal to 0. In other words, k1 is equal to negative 10. So we figure out what k1 is by using the initial condition for capacitor voltage. Now let's take a look at k2. For that, we'll use the initial condition for the current through that system. Now applying initial condition for t equals 0, but before that, we need to figure out what it is. So i is c dv dt. So we need to take the derivative of that. So here is CD VT was 10 plus K1 cosine omega DT plus K2 sine omega DT e to the power minus T sigma. So if we take that derivative, we'll get, of course, in this case, we do a derivative of 10 with respect to T. And in here, we have cosine omega D e to the power minus T sigma. So we need to do a derivative by parts. Again, for the second part here, we have sine omega dt e to the power minus t sigma. So we again do derivative by parts right here. So after doing the derivative, d 10 over dt, since 10 is a constant, we get 0. Uh, we did the derivative of cosine to get sine, sine to get cosine, and so forth. So here's i of t after we are done taking the derivatives. Now at time t equals 0, let's plug in all t to be 0. So i of 0 equals all t's set to 0. Sine 0 is of sine 0 is of course 0. Cosine 0 is of course 1. So let's plug that in. So we end up with 0, since i of 0 was 0, equals capacitor C k1 minus sigma plus k2 times omega d. So this is what we get. Now sigma and omega d come out to be 250 and 968.25 and that's calculated by sigma is zeta omega n. Omega d is omega n square root of 1 minus zeta square. 
and that is 968.25. So that's where we get 10 times 250, 968.25, and that leads us to K2 equals negative 2.58. So our voltage across the capacitor is now 10, that's because of the particular solution, minus 10, that's K1, cosine omega dt, minus 2.58 sine omega dt, e to the power of minus t over sigma. So if you plug in the value of sigma and omega t, omega d, we've solved the voltage across the capacitor. So, start out with a circuit where the switch was open at t equals, and at t equals zero, the switch was closed. The standard differential equation, second order differential equation in terms of the voltage across the capacitor was d squared v dt squared plus r over l dv dt plus v over lc equals 10 over lc. Because of the forcing function, our solution had both a particular and a homogeneous solution. We calculated jetta to be less than 1, leading us to a underdamped response. And we figured out that the voltage across capacitor is a particular solution and the homogeneous solution. By plugging in initial conditions, we found the values of k1, k2, and omega d and sigma. So our final solution is VCT equals 10 minus, taking the minus out, 10 cosine 968.25t plus 2.58 sine 968.25t e to the power of minus 250t volts.